some very strange architecture here in downtown Sigetvar. Very unique. Look at these conical structures. And here is Zrini Miklos, that brave, brave man who faced nearly insurmountable odds and had to go anyway. Love the guy. Look at that curved saber. Zrini Miklos. 1566, the day that he died, of course, being the Battle of Sigetvar, where he so heroically gave his life for the cause. Oh, oh, oh. we are in Sigetvar, approaching the battle reenactment of 1566. Oh, what an event. Some dissension in the Turkish ranks. They ran out of Santa Claus hats. Oh, whoa. God. Ah! Guys, a little bit late. A little bit late to the battle, buddy. A little bit late to the battle. At the end of the battle, there was only 600 remaining Magyar and Croatian defenders against Suleiman the Magnificent's force of almost a hundred thousand. Boo! Boo! It was Suleiman the Magnificent, of course, that defeated the Magyars at the Battle of Mohach in 1526, that ill-fated apocalypse of a battle that pretty much cemented the Ottoman presence in Hungary for the next 150 years. Look at this horse. Is this like a Hungarian horse? Aslam. Are you a Hungarian horse? Inconclusive. Yeah, well done. Well fought. Very well fought. MVP of the whole event. That guy's had. Well done. Pyrrhic victory, Turks. Pyrrhic victory. You won't make it to Vienna. <laughs> Ultimately, the Ottoman forces would prove to be victorious in the battle, but it was a Pyrrhic victory. And Zrini Miklos, with his 600 remaining men, took so many lives from the Ottomans. Suleiman the Magnificent ended up dying and perishing in his own tent. And it was in this battle of Sigetvar in 1566 that they say the Ottomans were finally stopped. Sigetvar, 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 you shouldn't have. Look at this. Amazing. Hungarian flag bumper cars. <laughs> Here we are on the Puchner estate. The Puchner Birtok. Uh -huh. Puchner Birtok. It's a Renaissance themed adventure park with like four bathhouses on property. Very historic, originally a cash die in the middle of the 19th century, and it's been converted into, well, pretty much one of the best hotels I've ever stayed in, laden with history. Oh, Pilango. Lovagok? Lovagok. <laughs> Teknush is turtle. I love that word, Teknush. Oh, and there's a Sharkan. And look at all the animals down here. Very nice facilities. Over there, in the uh, background, you can see they have like a jousting facility. And on the weekends, this place transforms into a medieval renaissance fair. I mean, we're here at an off-season, beginning of September, kids are back to school. A little bit of a down period. I'm quite enjoying it, actually. It's nice during these socially distant times to have a bit of peace and quiet. But it would be, I'm not going to lie, quite tantalizing and titillating to have a, a live joust going on. Oh well, we'll have to come back. Always have a reason to come back. What? The, the news? The newels? Alexa found the newels. He's not worried at all. He's just... Wow. He's just chilling. Alexa, you must be going crazy right now. We actually own a bunny named Chikosh. Chikosh. Oh, look at this little Chikosh. Mm-hmm. Super cute. Bunnies are... Wonderful house pets. Look, look, look. <laughs> it's the biggest mountain chain in Hungary. Okay. Whoa. 
Welcome to Azora. Look at the Azorians. Azora was the location in 1848 of a famous battle between the Hungarian revolutionaries and the Austrian Habsburg imperialists. And Gerge Arthur won a famous victory in Azora. Now, of course, it's more famous for being the location of arguably the most notable Psytrance festival in the entire world. Although the festival, Ozora Festival, doesn't actually take place within Ozora, it takes place within a neighboring little village known as Dadpusta. They weren't gonna let us in, but Alexa has worked up some magic access, and now we are heading inside to, I think you have to wait for this thing to be lowered. No, they said that I'm gonna Okay, well, that's a, that's a, a bollard, a bollard. I once crashed into one of those in Spain, completely destroyed the car. Okay, here we go. The gates of Azora. Be crazy. Look at that mushroom. <laughs> A lot of mushroom frames. I love the aesthetic. It's so rust laden, so nature infused. Everything is so beautiful in its own intrinsic way. Look at that. Even the lights, everything has a purpose. Burning man. <laughs> Burning man. Very excited to explore Zora. What goes on? Like, what's going on here during the festival? It's the main stage, and th those on the top. Yeah. It's the famous Azorian crystals. Uh huh. So you can just sit on the bottom of that and just watch the festival. Watch everybody to have some fun. <laughs> the Azorian crystals. You know, from a historical perspective, I would say that when they analyze our age and our generation 200, 300, 400 years from now, one of the things they will probably marvel at is these massive bursts and explosions of creativity and communal enjoyment. I think that's something that's on the positive side that we should celebrate about our modern age. It's beautiful, isn't it? Najan, Najan Nyanyuru. Leg sape, leg sape hey majorosagon. It's amazing. I'm blown away, speechless. Well, not really, I'm talking a lot. The Azora Festival stretches in every direction as far as you can see. And you can imagine that during the height of the festival, there's just tents sprawling all over the place. I mean, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people from all over the world commune here every year for the annual celebration of Azora. <laughs> baby back and better than ever this is a live shepherding you on a boat head southeast that was a live shepherding Morning, folks. Another day at the Cracker Jack factory. We are heading to Peach this afternoon, but before we go, Alexa's just gone in for a spot of horse riding. Oh, I think I see her in the distance. Her name is Balada. Balada? Balada, like Balada. Yeah. Najan, Najan, Ninirulo. Look at the little pony. Woo! Bulldog pony. So we've left Bikal and now we're heading out to Peach. We're only in Peach for a night, a day. I know, I know, Peach is amazing, everyone says it. Don't have that much time, unfortunately, but we're gonna see it while we can. Look at the corn, by the way. So much corn over here in the Peach region. So here we have a lovely statue 
and to the right, the city of Page. Page, you might think it's spelled Pex. I did too when I first got the Hungry, but it's pronounced Page. You can see the first hints of the Jolne tiling. You see this all over the place in Budapest, these very idiosyncratic tiles. And Page is the home of the Jolne factory where they produce those tiles. Probably the thing I'm most excited for here. The Magyar Nemzeti Színház, the Hungarian National Theater. Lovely. And we have the awnings up ahead. Page is really terrific. There is the center old mosque, one of the last and best remaining relics of the Ottoman era in Pech, and in Hungary for that matter. A real lovely centerpiece for the rest of the downtown district. Now on to the Jolne Neger we go. Janusz Pannonius. Janusz Pannonius. He was one of the prime men of Hungarian poetry back I think in like the 15th century before Hungarian was even really established as a written language, a real trailblazer. And I think he was based in Pech. He had a, a bishopric in Pech. You can see here on this street, sort of the juxtaposition between the old grandeur and the more understated stuff. I think this building is 1905, it says. So that would have been during the peak of the dual monarchy era. But if we go back to the Ottoman era of Pech, Pech was located very close to Mohach, where that famous battle occurred, where the Turks, where the Ottomans conquered the Hungarians. Mashadik Lajos fell off his horse into the river. The rest is history. And Pech, really more so than Budapest in a lot of ways, became the cultural capital of Ottoman Hungary. And Budapest was more of an administrative capital. You know, they had the waterways, the access routes. It was a bigger city. But Pech was one of the cultural flourish points of Ottoman Hungary. And there was very few. There were very few. The Ottomans really ran down Hungary in a lot of ways and used it as a buffer between their empire and the Austrian lands. But Pech was one of those rare fountains of culture during a very deserted age. So here we are in the uh, Jolne Kulturalis Negye, the Jolne cultural quarter. Kiro granite. We got some great art inside this little art gallery in uh, the Jolne quarter. Whoa, some local artists. This one is amazing. Very cool. Very dark, a little bit ghastly. Sort of reminds me of where the wild things are. Who is this? Rolfus Kinga. I like your work, Kinga. I like it very much. Lovely material, yes. So you can see right here some of these idiosyncratic materials, this is the Piro granite, and it's so jolne, so, oh, cool, love. It's almost overwhelming to see some of the beautiful designs that have been made with this jolne material. Most of the exhibits here are closed, but even from just walking around the empty streets, not really streets, but empty paths, you just get such a feel for the spectacular, vibrant colors and beauty that Jolne tiling lends itself to. Some... Wow. It's amazing that this, it must be really expensive. We have to find that, is this stuff super expensive? It is expensive. Okay, I was gonna say, I want my house to be completely coated head to toe in Piro granite. Jolne. Porcelan Manufactura. Sunset erupts over the city of Pitch. Couldn't really ask for anything better. The Music Academy. This is the, the Jaegverum. It's an ice house. It used to be used for cooling. Down beneath there, they would store big blocks of ice. I love pitch. I really love pitch. Everyone was saying you're gonna love pitch. Well, the verdict is out. I love pitch. <laughs> Oh my God, just a Jolne tile topped Mobita Babsin has. Babsin has, puppet theater, big puppet guy. Don't know how many of you know that about me, but I am a massive, massive puppet guy. We're at the Tuca, the Tuca Borjas. Amazing restaurant. I'm a huge fan of this place. Number one on TripAdvisor for a reason. And here we have the Turo Gombats, traditional dessert. Oh, look at that. Get, get a close-up of the cottage cheese and the cinnamon and the... Mm. 
so this, this is the traditional one. They have two different types. One with poppy seeds and homemade cranberry jam. And this is the traditional one with cinnamon and some sour cream on the top. It's like eating a cloud. Thank you ever so much for tuning in, folks. Kusunum Sepen Baratayim. That is part one of our road trip around Western Hungary in the books. Azora, Pech, Bikal, and Sigetbar. Stay tuned for part two. Shoprone, Kuseg, and Balatan Fure. Siasto. Mindenkinek.